Hello and welcome to a new series. Yes, another one. This one is called Let's Talk Art. And it's basically going to be me talking about artists I think are brilliant and underrepresented and that you absolutely should know about. So, grab your cup of tea, grab a notebook if you want to take some notes, and uh, let's get into it. So to start things off, we're going to go with an artist that I have a very wonderful history with. I studied him for my high school uh, HSC and his name is Jason Wing. Jason Wing is an Aboriginal and Chinese, specifically Cantonese, uh, Australian artist. He was born and grew up in Cabramatta, which was Sydney's first Chinatown. Because of his ethnicity and his upbringing, he represents a cultural mix of what it means to be an Australian, and he's very interested in cultural engagement in his work. Many of his themes include cultural identity, the combination of humans and nature, urban landscapes and human identity within that. One of the overarching themes that can be found in all of his work is this idea of positive, international, universal human spirituality. Jason Wing began as a street artist, so very humble beginnings, starting from the bottom. Artists that are underappreciated and often considered vandals, or even if they've been commissioned for murals, that kind of thing, their work often gets vandalized. So yeah, one of the things that he does really, really well is questioning history. Because he is Aboriginal, he constantly looks at how history was written from the viewpoint of the colonizers and how certain things were left out when taught in school. Uh, he did a great exhibition at Port Macquarie discussing Governor Macquarie's, uh, let's just say, less than pleasant uh, opinion on Aboriginal people. I have got a bunch of links in the description, so if you want to go and read up on that, definitely do. Basically talking about how we idolise and whitewash and kind of sterilise history to show Europeans as being, you know, on a quest for creating a civil place to live with beautiful land, farms and construction, and it wasn't like that at all. A very, very small percentage of what was going on was like that. And branching off of that, Jason Wing focuses on empowering minority groups in Australia, uh, as he says, in this colonised country. Because it's not just Aboriginal people that are disenfranchised, colonialism has brought a lot of negative thoughts and opinions and guilt and shame about things that are absolutely fine. A lot of it tied in with Christianity, uh, that oppresses multiple groups of people. So Jason really focuses on empowering minority groups and especially his local Aboriginal community. Jason Wing has said that he grew up with a very kinesthetic brain. He loved to draw and write things and make things with his hands. So he kind of always knew that art was where he was going to go. He studied at Sydney College of Fine Arts uh, and dropped out and graduated later and did a bunch of other courses and now has a Masters of Fine Art from ANU, which is brilliant. And I just think that's really great. <laughs> the way he built up his career is rather interesting. He entered local art prizes from different councils and different uh, grants for over 10 years and kind of built up his persona and his reputation that way. He entered competitions for local artworks, like murals, sculptures, that kind of thing, which works really well because he touches every medium. He uses all mediums such as print, sculpture, drawing, silk screen printing, mixed media, anything you can name, he has done something with it. Something I really appreciate about Jason Wink is that he works similar to me and it kind of, uh, adds a validity to my practice to see him doing this. He chooses whatever medium suits the message he wants to convey best. I feel like that's something that not enough artists do. A lot of the time artists get stuck in a couple of mediums or even just one or even a particular subject and they just go with it. So it's really refreshing to see someone who kind of ignores the rules, like the unspoken rules of the art world and just makes whatever fits into the mindset, the message that needs to be conveyed. 
Specifically, he said, I like trying new things and I'm not afraid to tell the truth and take risks with my work and life, which is something I think a lot of people can learn from. Financial stability is never going to be an artist's strong point, so you might as well make what you want and try and finance your life another way rather than, you know, corrupt what you're making. Or at least not all of your time should be spent making art to suit other people's tastes because then it just becomes a job you're going to hate like anything else. Another thing that I really love about him leaving art school is this quote that he said, which again resonates with me as someone who's dropped out of school a few times and is back. I'm graduating this year, so this is very encouraging. He said, But actually, I left art school and I didn't make any artwork for 13 years. I worked in bars, did some teaching, and then I made my first artwork in 2006. That's when I knew that I needed to pursue this career because I could see that I could create social change through art. So that's all about Jason and his upbringing, his background as an artist, his schooling. Not that schooling is that important, but you know. Now, I'd love to talk about three artworks of his that mean a lot to me. Two, I was lucky enough to see in person when they were exhibited. Well, one is a public arts project, so it's still there. You can go and see it yourself. And the third one is one he made during COVID. So let's start with the first work of his that I was ever introduced to. Western Sydney has a suburb called Blacktown that is named such because it's the location of one of the largest missions in Australia where a lot of Aboriginal children were stolen from their homes and brought up to be basically slaves, house servants, uh, tradespeople for white families. Uh, it was considered a Christian mission to educate the savages. They were not allowed to speak their native tongue. They weren't allowed to engage in any cultural practices. It, it's, it's really depressing. And I think the worst part of it all was that it was assumed, it was genuinely believed that their parents had no feelings for them, that they were like wild animals. So Jason created this work called Waiting for December 28th. And it's a series of muslin tents with silk screen prints of the mission where the children were being kept. And the reason he chose these tents is because the mission was surrounded by this massive barbed wire fence and the parents and families of the children that were stolen were pitched up in tents outside of the mission fences, hoping to even catch a small glimpse of their children. And he wanted to bring that back, that, that imagery, that thought about the importance of community, the pain that was caused. And I remember seeing that and seeing those physical tents in that space and just crying. And it was very powerful. Like he says, he chooses mediums based on messages. And I think having physical tents in that space really helped you see those parents and the heartbreak and the trauma and the stress of not being able to have access, not being able to see your children, the ones you love. It was very, very powerful. The whole exhibition was very well done. Um, all the information that I'm giving you here today is in the description. There's articles about, oh, sorry, I'm tearing up. <laughs> There's articles about the Native Institute and the other artists who contributed. It's, it's, it's brilliant stuff. And it's a history that needs to be told loudly so that future generations aren't fed lies. He has since worked and collaborated with many young Aboriginal artists who he feels are incredibly confident and proud of their heritage and very skilled in both creating their artwork and getting it in front of people's faces. He said this, This current generation and the next wave of Aboriginal artists are fierce, intelligent, connected to their culture, well-researched, sophisticated, experimental, multidisciplinary, unapologetic, and critical of the Australian government in a visually seductive way. He believes in the future and so do I. The second work I want to talk about is called In Between Two Worlds and it's a public art project. Chinatown in the city has a laneway called Kimber Lane that he was commissioned to create murals for and design the space. He ended up using a very strong blue theme, light blue and dark blue, and mixing both his Chinese and his Aboriginal heritage 
and spirituality together into these beautiful images. The walls are covered in auspicious clouds that represent good luck and heaven, and the floors are painted with them as well. The hanging in the space above are little cherub-like angels that represent both Aboriginal and Chinese spirits. They're bright blue and they create this beautiful glow in this space. When Jason was approached to, and asked to create this public work, he wasn't that well known and he was kind of stressed about creating this big project. This is what he had to say about it. How do I take an urban landscape and transform it into something not so much a physical park but a visual park? Because we don't have access to land in Chinatown. I wanted to create an environment that resembled another world, another place. I wanted to create visual indicators that said, you're not in the city anymore. The place is genuinely beautiful. If you're ever in Sydney, I highly suggest that you go and have a little wander down. It really does feel like you're in another world. It, it does feel like a beautiful, spiritual, heavenly space. And those little angel babies are genuinely beautiful. The other thing that I find really interesting is that he talks a lot in documentaries and interviews about how it was interesting growing up as two different hated minorities in Australia, uh, being Chinese and Aboriginal, and that his family would come together at Dixon Street in Chinatown in the city and have lunch on Sundays. And that Chinatown is this space where people can come together. This is what he had to say about it. Chinatowns are all over the world, so when you go there, it's like your little safe place. And it's nice that you have that option, in lots of countries. So it's a real honour and a privilege to contribute to that cultural fabric in Chinatown. The last work of his that I'd like to talk about is one that he did during 2020, where he focused more on hand-drawn elements in this journal he called Design Isolate, or COVID-1770. Because Jason was plugged into social media, he was looking at all the Black Lives Matter protests, all the issues with lockdown, the unfair treatment of Western Sydney in comparison to the Northern Beaches. Quick rundown of that if you're not aware. Couple in Avalon tests positive for COVID, goes to a massage parlor, Thai restaurant, local country club, does all sorts of things. Entire state basically goes into lockdown. They suffer no repercussions. Western Sydney workers, largely non-white, uh, are working as truck drivers, Uber drivers, um, Woolworths, like grocery store workers, basically menial labor that nobody else wants to do and live in share housing more often than not so that COVID ends up spreading despite precautions in that area too. Military is sent. Unfair lockdown restrictions put on those people. They can't move within five kilometers of their house. The disparity between how the rich uh, and honestly, the degenerate rich who don't give a shit about anybody compared to people in the West who are just genuine hardworking people doing their best to survive is very evident. And you can see that in Jason's work in this journal. He talks about how it kind of mimics this old colonialist ideal of who gets freedoms and who doesn't. Jason has focused on a lot of sculptural pieces in the past, but because of lockdown and just the inaccessibility to certain materials and public spaces, he's focused a lot on drawing. So that's what this journal is about. And this is what he says. Isolation has encouraged more handmade and more drawing in my arts practice. It has been a validating time for artists as we are the first to survive as these economic conditions are familiar to us. We've always thrived despite financial and social marginalization. So that's the general gist of uh, Jason Wing's work. If you want to see more of his stuff, like I said, description. All the resources you need are right there. If you have an artist that you would love me to cover, please let me know. I'm going to continue focusing on local Australian artists because I feel like there's so many videos on Matisse, as much as I love Matisse. There's so much out there on Georgia O'Keeffe, and Frida Kahlo and whoever else. I want to focus on underrepresented artists and even though I'm tiny, uh, a few people watch me. And as long as I can keep spreading the message, spreading the love and the knowledge, 
uh, in 2020, I did a whole series of illustrations back when I had an Instagram of uh, black writers, both indigenous, Australian, and uh, mostly North American. I did a couple from like Europe, uh, and I also did a lot of black queer writers, which was really refreshing. So I felt like a lot of people have kind of fallen off the bandwagon, like after the big rush of BLM, people were like, yeah, I'm gonna promote black creators, and then kind of just stopped. And I feel like that's kind of a shitty thing to do. So, make an effort to find black creators to follow, to encourage, to get behind, to support. And yeah, keep talking about art, keep making art, keep looking at art, keep loving art. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked this. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe. Uh, really helps encourage me and help me realize that what I'm doing is not a waste of time, even though I enjoy doing this. It's kind of geared towards an audience, so it kind of feels shitty if there isn't one. Thank you for always being really nice and leaving great comments. Uh, I really appreciate them. Even one comment really, I don't know, makes my heart warm and makes me feel like what I'm making is worth something to at least someone. So, yeah, I'll see you in my next video. Also, how cute is my new studio?